With the foot in a fixed pronated position, the force to start along the medial axis of the tibia. The leg undergoes an internal rotation, creating tension on the deltoid ligament complex. In a stage 1 injury, one of two pathologies may occur, rupture of the deltoid ligament complex or a transverse fracture of the medial malleolus. As the injury progresses forward into stage 2, the talus rotates further laterally, putting tension on the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, resulting in either a rupture of this ligament or an involution fracture off the anterior portion of the fibula or tibia. As the forces continue past stage 2, rupture of the interosseous membrane begins to occur distally at the level of the ankle joint. The exit point of this rupture creates a stage 3 injury described as a high, short oblique fracture of the fibula beginning above the level of the syndesmosis. This fracture can be at various levels of the fibula. The most proximal fracture pattern occurs at the head and neck of the fibula, which is described as a Maisonneuve fracture. If the forces progress into stage 4, either a rupture of the posterior tibial fibular ligament or a fracture of the posterior malleolus also known as Volkmann's fracture, will occur. Note, the combined rupture of the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, and the interosseous membrane results in a true ankle diastasis. In summary, the hallmark signs of this injury include beginning along the medial axis of the tibia, rupture of the interosseous membrane in conjunction with rupture of the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, and the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament creates a true ankle diastasis. The high fibular spiral fracture, also known as Maisonneuve fracture, seen in stage 3 is unique to pronation external rotation injuries.